fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. It's been a long, like you said, yeah, it's been a long yeah, day. Long it's been a long day. Okay. Um, so slope, here's the big idea, right? Slope is rise over run. Rise is how far up or down it goes, which is y. Run is how far across, left or right it goes, that's the x. So all you do is you just subtract the y's for the top and the x's for the bottom. Whatever number you get, you get. So, so should we try some? All right. So Vanessa, you understand I gave you all that information because yes. I want you to understand what we're doing, not just how. Okay, Alex. Listo, Alex. This is the formula right here. This is the, the formula right there. Slope is rise over run. So let's find the slope. Let's see here. Find the slope of the line with points. Ooh, should we, we'll throw a couple negatives in there. 0, negative 2, and negative 1, 7. Oh, man. So the tricky thing about this, right? We don't know which one's number one and which one's number two. Like, you know what I'm talking about? We have y2 and y1. We don't know if this is y2 or if this is y1. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It could be either one. You just pick one. The thing is, once you pick, you can't switch. Eminem, you know what I mean? Like, if you pick this to be the first point, then if this is y1, then that has to be x1. It can't be like y1 and x2. Oh, but you, you can pick which one you want. You can pick whichever one you want to be x1 and y1. So we're going to do it both ways. We're going we're gonna to pick both ways. So here's what, we're gonna, here's what I'm saying. We're going to say, like, okay, here's our formula, right? We're going to say, what if you pick this to be number one? And we're going to do the math. And then we're going to say, what if you pick this to be number one? We're going to do the math. And you'll see you get the same answer. Yeah? OK, so let's see here. Hmm. x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's see, y2, 7. Now, there's a minus right there. That minus, it doesn't care what comes next. That minus is part of the formula, so you have to write it. It doesn't matter what comes next. Y1 turns out to be negative 2. That minus sign has nothing to do with this. So you need them both. OK, x2, negative 1, minus, right, minus, and then x1 would be 0. So now you just got to do order of operations, simplify, right? Let's see, isn't this like plus? So that becomes 9? over, well, that's negative 1, right? And you can simplify that a little bit. That just equals negative 9. So these two points would have a slope that's negative 9. It's going down. Big time. Oh, yeah. Like you just got hit in the head with a cow going down. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Alex, now we're going to switch it, okay? Because the, the thing I want to show you is it doesn't matter which way you do it. So we're going to switch it now. We're going to say... Instead of this being number point number one, we're going to say this is now point number two. And we're going to say this was point number one. Okay? So y2 is negative two. So negative two. And then minus, right? Minus y1, siete. And then x2, zero. And then minus, right? Minus. And then x1, negativo uno. All right. Negative 2 minus 7, that's equal to negative 9. Minus negative 1, 0 minus negative 1 is positive 1. So that's still negative 9. We got the same answer, two different ways. That means we're probably right. Increíble. Increíble. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, right? That formula y2 minus y1 over, yeah. that's the formula we're always going to use? Yep, that's the slope formula. Yep, M stands for slope. Long story, but it does. Yeah. So if you're ever asked, I'm glad you asked that question, because if you're ever asked to find the slope of a line, 
You have two choices. You have two chances, really. Well, maybe you have three, Eminem. You could maybe, like, if you had a graph like the one we started with, like, if you had a graph like this, and there was, like, some line, you could count. Oh, yes. You could just count. You just, you just find two points, like right here, and maybe right there, and you just count. That would be the rise, and that would be the run. Okay, so you just figure out your numbers. You're changing Y, you're changing X, and then you just make sure that it's rise over run. And then you divide it. If you can simplify it, you simplify it. Yeah. Don't make it a decimal, though, because that's going to confuse you when we start graphing. Okay. Fractions are so perfect. Leave it as a fraction. Yes, sir. So you could count. You could use the formula. If they gave you two points, you would probably use the formula. And then there's one other way. If they gave you an equation that was already written out, like 1 half x minus 5, that's slope-intercept form, the slope's 1 half. Did you guys know that, or do you not know yes, that? I remember that. You remember that, yeah. but you didn't. OK, but, OK. Sam, uh, Sam, you know that, or no? Negative 5 is right or something. OK, we're going to talk about that in a little bit anyway. Yeah, but you're right. Negative 5 is a y-intercept. OK, so that's three ways to find slope. All right, now what happens if we get something kind of ugly? Like, like most of this is going to be beautiful, like all of you, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes it gets ugly. So, Jackie, sometimes it's like, ugh. Ready? Sometimes it's a train wreck. So, for example, let's say, oh, my line guy, look, it's all the schwacko right there. Oh, man. Pretend it's a straight line. We're going to draw a graph. Let's say this is, of course, the x-axis. That's the y-axis. We're going to do two of them. Okay, Alex, you ready? Okay. Um, uh oh. Somebody stole my ruler. No, there it is. Yeah, they stole it. Okay. Oh, heck yeah. Let's say that's our line. Ooh, it's all blurry. It's like Alex when he got off, off the ground after the cow hit him. <laughs> right? Okay. And then. We could have another one like, let's put it down here. Yeah? So so these are the two things that are going to confuse you. So I want to kind of talk about them. Because Priscilla, as far as just using the formula goes, if you all you got to do is plug the numbers in the right place. If you mess it up, you probably just add wrong. Happens. Just got to be careful but you'll have the idea what to do. This is the thing that's going to mess you up conceptually. Like, you might not get the idea. All right, this is vertical, right? And this is horizontal. Now, I know that we did this really fast last week, and you might have forgotten. But if it's a vertical line, the equation is going to be x equals some number. Oh. Vanessa, what number do you want this to be right here? Fantastic. So this would be x equals 5. That would be the equation of the line. Because everywhere on here, x would equal 5, right? So like, like that point would be 5, 0. That would be the x-intercept. This point right here would still be 5, comma, negative 4 or something. And this would be 5, 3 or something like that. Yeah? So you remember, everywhere on the vertical line, x is going to be equal to 5. That's the equation of the line. This is a picture of all of the solutions to that equation. Do you see how there's not a y? Yeah. And then you see there's no y, right? It doesn't matter what y is. All that matters is that x equals 5. So that's the picture. Okay. Yeah? OK. And then, and then, well, let's talk about its slope. Oh my gosh, this is scary. I put four points on, or three points on there. We just need to pick two. Let's pick these two. It doesn't matter which two. We just randomly picked. So let's see. Let's start with the formula. Y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1. Right? All right. Now we're going to plug in. Let's see. So we're going to say, we're sure. I'll write it right here. We'll say 5, 0 is X1, Y1. Right? And we'll say 5, negative 4 is x2, y2. So I, this is just to help so I don't mess up what I'm doing. 
because I hate when I mess up something silly just because I didn't take a second to write it. Okay, Jackie. Why two? Negativo cuatro. Yeah? <gasps> y1 is minus zero. So y2, negative four, minus y1. So zero. Yeah. Okay. X2, five, minus five. Yeah? That is negative four over zero. Oh my goodness. Just do it like that? No, you can't. So let's get to this one. Now I'll, I'll just show you. Here's, here's maybe you forgot. Maybe maybe you forgot. But division is asking a question. So like if I write it over here, eight over two. That's true. That's four, right? Eight divided by two is four. And the reason that's four, like like what that means, it means two times what number equals eight. The reason this equals 4 is because 2 times 4 equals 8. That's how division works. So like 10 divided by uh, 5 is really saying 5 times what equals 10. So 2, right? 5 times 2 is 10. This is asking you 0 times what number equals negative 4? Sam, 0 times everything is 0, right? There's no number times zero that equals negative four, right? Yeah. This is not a number. There's no answer. It, it's not even that like we can't answer it because we don't know. It's not an answer. So the way we say that is we call it undefined. Useless. So vertical lines. They're always going to be x equals some number, right? That's not x equals hashtag. Not x equals hashtag. It's x equals some number, right? x equals a number. No y. It's vertical. They have undefined slopes. Because you can't divide by 0. Wait, didn't I ask you that on a quiz or a test? Why can't you divide by 0? Yeah. No? Yeah, I thought I did. Oh, here's the fact you got to know right there. Check this out. Man, somebody left some white out. Huh. Oh, look, it's working. <laughs> oh, man, that's pathetic. All right. So anyway, I, I wanted to get rid of that because I was going to circle the whole thing. Not a number was talking about what this is, right? But this is the fact you have to know. Did all this work to hopefully make you understand? Because if you understand, you remember. Yeah. You don't have to study as much when you, under, when you understand. You just have to refresh your memory. Mm -hmm. But if you don't understand, then you have to memorize, and then, then that's not going to work. Okay. This one, this is horizontal. Oh, hey Vanessa, you did such a good job on the last one. What number is that? Six. How about negative six? Negative six. Because it's underneath right, there. Right. Yeah, so that's negative six. So this would be, this one would be y equals negative six. Everywhere on that line, y is going to equal negative six. It's horizontal. So like this would be. 2 comma negative 6 and uh, this would be 0 negative 6 and this one would be negative 5 negative 6 or something right we're just M &M, you know we're just making up all these numbers right yeah okay so Priscilla um, when we find the slope on this one what's going to happen is the numerator is going to be 0 so let's go ahead and do it though let's just pick two points let's use negative 5 6 Sorry, negative 6, right? And then 2, negative 6. Let's use those two points. And then let's find the slope. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Huh. Right? The slope is going to be that. That's the formula. 
okay? So negative 6 minus negative 6, right? Negative 6 for y2 minus, got to write it anyway, negative 6. That's what it's going to be. And then the denominator, x2 is 2, and then minus, x1 is negative 5. Okay, don't freak out. Lots of negatives, right? That minus a negative is plus. Negative 6 plus 6, 0. Yeah? And that's 7. This is asking 7, 7 times what number equals 0? Like this one is asking 0 times what is negative 4? This one's saying 7 times what equals 0? So this equals 0. Because 7 times 0 is 0. So vertical lines. Hate my life. My, there was like a little warning bell going on in the back of my mind saying it was horizontal lines. But then I was thinking like, okay, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the paper ends right here. And I was I was like trying to figure out how I could write this without going off the paper. And so I'm like, shut up, little warning bell. You know? Yeah. Okay. Horizontal lines. Uh, nah. I'm making mistakes because the whiteout's here. It's tempting me. <laughs> Horizontal lines. They're going to be. They're always going to be y equals a number, which is confusing because the y-axis is vertical. But when it's y equals a number, it's horizontal. So horizontal lines like y equals a number have a slope of 0. Always and forever, amen. Yes, right. What do you think about that? Good, bad? What's that? <laughs> oh. That's fantastic, right? Carlos, what's your question? Yeah, about what? The green part? The horizontal lines have a slope of zero? Confusing because it's new. Yeah. yeah, that's why yeah, doing practice problems and homework, big deal. It's like very important. It's when you get unconfused, it's just with practice. All right. Hmm. So let's see here. Got slope formula. Check. 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 Now look, you're going to have to practice some problems, and you're going to have to probably refer to your notes. Mm -hmm. What, Alex? You know how you said right now it's confusing because it's new? Yeah. It's the same thing when you have a new girlfriend. Girlfriends are always confusing. Sure. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've been married. I actually have known my wife. I've known my wife since I was um, 14. She still confuses the crap out of me. <laughs> Not literally. Figuratively, not not literally confuses the crap out of me. That'd be very awkward. <laughs> but, it, but you know, figuratively, yeah, I get very confused. I get, I, I don't know. The biggest thing is I don't know why she stays with me because I'm a I'm a handful. Yeah, I'm a mess. Okay. <laughs> now, um, dang, Sam, yeah. the the intercepts. We talked about it just real quick the other day. But let's say we had a graph like this. Yeah? That's our coordinate plane. X and there's Y. Okay. Jackie, do you want a positive slope for this one or a negative slope? Negative slope? Okay. Which quadrant do you want it to not go through? There's only four. <laughs> three. Th quadrant number three is this this one. Because it goes one, two, three, four. So you want a negative slope that doesn't go through this quadrant. Do you think we can draw that? Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to pick two points first. Do you see? If I connect the line through those two points, it's not going to go through quadrant number three. Yeah? Okay. And those two points have something exactly to do with what I was going to teach you about. These are intercepts where your graph crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis, those are called intercepts. And they're one of the most important things about graphs. So there's our, there's our line, right? I don't know what the equation of that line is, but there it is. We're going to find the equation of this made-up line in just a minute. It's going to be fan-freaking-tastic. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited about this. All we got to do is we got to make up some numbers for these two points. Man, but here's where you got to be careful. Man. Priscilla, we have to be careful right here. Remember, Priscilla, math is like dating. If you hurry and rush, you do something stupid, you get your feelings hurt. No good. Check this out. This point right here. Do you see how it's on the x-axis? That tells me for sure y has to be 0. Because, like, y are the numbers on here, right? And, and the number right here for y, everywhere on this line, is y equals 0. The x-axis is the equation y equals 0. So I don't know what number it is for x, but I know y has to be 0 right there. We're going to make up a number for x. Sam, what number do you think x should be for that one right there? Three? That is fantastic. <laughs> the first odd prime number. Three. Okay. Now, uh, M and M. I have no idea what this point right here is either. But I do know for this point right here, X has to be zero. Because everywhere on the Y axis, X is zero. Because that's what X is right here. It's zero, zero. The coordinate is zero, zero. And everywhere this direction, X is zero. In fact, if you don't remember, the y axis the y axis is the equation x equals zero. It has an undefined slope. This has a slope of zero. Alright. Mr. Quelas, what uh, number do you want that to be for y? Five. Five. Fantastic. Five is a prime number, but it's the sum of the first two prime numbers. Three plus two is five. Weird. Oh, uh, crazy. <laughs> Halloween's coming. Just wait. It's going to get worse. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm trying to do a couple things right here for you, okay? I'm trying to teach you about intercepts, and then we're also, at the same time, going to work on this. Dang. And at the same time, we're going to work on this. <gasps> oh, my gosh. We are going to count this slope. We're going to find this slope in not one, but count them two ways. Fancy. You don't even have to pay extra. Not even shipping and handling. It's, it's Tuesday. I'm excited about this. Vanessa, you ready? So we're going to find the slope of this equation. We're going to find it two ways. We're going to do it first by counting. Okay? So first thing you got to have in your head, slope. Rise over run. That's the change in x in the denominator. That's the run. And the rise is the change in y. So how far up or down does it go between two points? That's y. This is how far left and right it goes between two points. That's the change in x. So all we got to do is count. Let's count y. Like y is from 0 right here, right? And then it goes up to doo -doo 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 -doo, It goes up to 5. So how far is it from 0 to 5? 5. Oh, that's easy, right? That's so easy a caveman could do it. There's hope, Alex. <laughs> okay, Alex. Uh, and then from 0 to 3. 3. So I think my slope has something to do with 5 over 3. But I have to be careful. What? Yes, yeah, 3. Because from 0 to 3 for the x, yeah. it's just over 3. So the rise is 5, the run is 3, but we have a little bit of a problem. What kind of slope did Jackie want? Negative. Is that a negative slope? Remember, you read them from left to right. If you're going down from left to right, it's negative. That is a negative slope. If you're reading all the So if you're reading, because, you know, like, 
we read from left to right. So if you look at this line starting at the left and going right, you end up going down. That's a, This goes down from left to right. It's going negative down. Slope, that's The only reason it's not a negative is because of how I counted it. So I have to make sure I say this is, in fact, a negative slope because it's going down from left to right. So you just add, so you add the... Yeah, I just threw the negative in there because this is 5 and this is 3. Right, so... so you put like negative 5 over 3 or negative... No. So negative, yeah, negative 5 over 3. Like, if this is 0 and that's negative 1 and this is negative 2, negative 5 over 3 is like right here. That's negative 5 over 3. It's almost negative 2. The whole entire number is negative, not the top or the bottom. Just the, the number itself is negative. Sam, we doing good on this? Okay. Sam, we're going to find that slope one more way. Because we have two points. Hi, Sonia. Hi. I mean, Sophia. I heard your name is Sophia. Okay. Uh, I just hear, I hear things sometimes. The voices in my head. I only get in trouble when I argue with them. Okay. Uh, who told me what? Who told you? What? Well, I don't know. I just figured, you know, you get. <laughs> yeah, she told me. <coughs> I'm not. I don't say nothing in front of him because there's a big class, but I'm like looking like. So did the um, okay. There's uh, a gas station that I go to all the time. For 25 years, I've been going to the gas station. And there's the same guy that's worked there for 25 years, and it used to be before I was a teacher. I worked in produce. And um, our office was in the same building as the gas station. We rented an office at the back of the gas station. And we had an account, so if we wanted to buy stuff, we didn't pay, we just signed. And then we'd pay once a month, right? So I've known this guy forever. He still calls me Jim. <laughs> For my entire life, he has called me Jim. You just accepted it, right? I'm just like, okay, I'm Jim. It says right on there what my name is on the account and everything. And then, and then like, I, um, I was in the newspaper a few weeks ago, and my, I was, uh, or a few months ago, I was on the front page, and it has my name right there. And he's like, "Hey, you're in the paper today, Jim." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> I don't even care. It's just funny. Maybe at this point, he's just like, "It's too late to go back." Like, I'm just gonna yeah, I'm just gonna make a mistake. I'm just sticking with my mistake. He might think my parents messed up. <laughs> yeah. I saw your your. Mr. Todd is your uncle, right? So I saw him at the meeting last week, but I didn't tell him anything. I'm going to tell him tomorrow. Okay. He's cool. Yeah. He knows Jim. All right. Jim? <laughs> so, um, Jackie, Jim we found the slope by counting. Now we're going to find it using the formula, and just to make sure, okay? Mm -hmm. So the formula, again, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, right? So we've done it a bunch of times, so I'm going to go a little faster this time. Y2, I'm going to say this one's Y2, so it's going to be 5 minus 0, and 0 minus 3. And that is 5 minus 0 is 5, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Sometimes the formula, you can mess up the math. But do you see how, without even doing any thinking, we have the sign correct? That's a negative number. But when we counted, we got the sign wrong. We had to look at the picture. Jackie, you see what I mean? Yeah. So you got to be good at doing it uh, both ways, OK? All right. So yes, sir. I mean, what what question would, 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 would be in front of all of this? Like, what would, what would you well, ask find the slope of, of? I might ask you to find the slope. What we're actually going to do is we're going to find the equation. of this line. But the purpose of the whole thing is not just the equation. I wanted to talk about how intercepts have zeros very specifically and then about our slope formula. Yeah. So there's like I'm trying to cover a bunch of stuff with one little example. In fact, that reminds me, Sam. Mm -hmm. We need to dang, once again. You reminded me. I got I got distracted by uh, Sophia. I mean Sonia. <laughs> Uh, check this out. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll stop. Sonia. I'm sorry. 
this is the this is the y-intercept, right? And this is a fact. It's a really really important fact. X is always zero. at the y-intercept. That's a very important fact. And it's it's really important because it can help you find graphs, but it's also true for all graphs. These are linear. Depending on how far you go in math, you're going to do all kinds of graphs. This fact is always, always true forever and ever. It's nothing to do with this lesson or this topic or this class. It's true about all graphs. If you have a y-intercept, x is 0. If you want to find a y-intercept, you put a 0 for x and solve for y. Okay. Ooh, we'll do that. Oh, this is going to be beautiful right here. This is going to be like decorating for Christmas. Ready? Watch. Because you see how this is like a little sh 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 right there? Watch. Watch this. To find a y-intercept, replace x with 0 and solve for y. We're not going to do an example of that just yet, but I kind of want to introduce it so it's kind of there, and then in a few minutes we're going to do that. Okay? Blue's Clues kind of thing. I told you about Blue's Clues, right, Carlos? Showed you a rerun. Yeah, it repeats because you learn the second time. So I'm introducing this idea to you again now. We did it last week, too. I'm introducing it again now. We're going to try it in a minute, though. Kind of, kind of. What we're really doing, Sonia, is we're just talking about all kinds of ideas and facts about graphs. Because if you have the ideas and the facts, then the steps are just kind of like obvious. Yeah. OK, Jackie. Now, Jackie, the other thing about this one right here, that's the x-intercept, right? That's the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, it's the opposite. y is 0. Man, where can I write this? I'm going to have to write it over here. <laughs> I'll, I'll write it over here because we're running out of room. So for the x-intercept, <coughs> y is always 0 for x-intercepts. Always and forever, amen. <laughs> yeah. You like the amen part, right, Sam? <laughs> yeah. So, Sam, what that means then is if we're going to find a y-intercept, uh, an x-intercept, I mean, if we're going to find an x-intercept, all you do is put 0 for y. INT stands for intercept, right? So to find an x-intercept, why are you throwing stuff, Priscilla? Oh, that was Eminem? Yeah. You I'm getting angry. violent over there? Yeah, yeah you're angry? Oh, yeah, I'm angry. Or are you hangry? You, you need a Snickers? Yes. You're not yourself when you're hungry. You got one? No. I had one yesterday. I had two yesterday. It's a little one. Oh, that's Somebody gave me Snickers. Yeah, the fun size. Those are great. Yeah. How many trust Does two of them make one? No. Like four? Probably four, yeah. Four of them probably make one. So you're only half yourself. Yeah. yeah, you're only half yourself if you have two fun size sneakers. Right? That's good math. If four fun size are one snicker and you're not yourself if you're hungry, then if you have two fun size, you're half yourself. Maybe you should use snickers and then we'd get it. Because you just use the food and math and we'll get it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right. <laughs> now, let's see. Do you guys remember that the equation of a line? So here, here's our line, right? We're going to find the equation of this line right here. This, oh, wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. Alex, what is, an, what is a graph of a line? What's a graph? 
So this red thing is a picture of all the answers to some equation, right? So like every single point on here, every x and y combined would be an answer. Right? Sonia, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're gonna find we're gonna find the equation that has only these answers that are on that line. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? Now our our answer, our equation, it's gonna look like this. And here's the thing that's kind of weird. And you might not understand why I did this right now, but you're about to. Like, like even though we, I, yeah, you'll see. There's a method to my madness. Amen. Amen. Um, Sam, the X and the Y in this right here, this, this isn't a formula, okay? It's not a formula. It's called slope, intercept, Form. Form is a shape, right? So it's just a way of writing an equation. It's the most common way. And it's really nice because, well, <coughs> y is just y, right? And x is just x. And you know that m is slope, slope okay. right? So now the only thing we're curious about is what does this letter be? And what B is, B is the y-intercept. The number that goes right there is always going to be the y-intercept. Why did I put an arrow here? Yeah. Just because I was just making sure you saw that I was talking about y is just y. Wow, that's right, Alex. And x is just x. Like, it's just the variable. Oh. So, um, check this out, though. Uh, this is the y-intercept. What does x, this is x, right? What does x always equal if you have a y-intercept? Zero. 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 It says right here, right? So, x is always zero if you have a y-intercept. So, like, like, right? Like here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check this out. If you put a zero for x, <laughs> if you, he's like, oh, it's, it's clicking, right? He's like, it's clicking. At first, you didn't know why I did all this. Yeah. Yeah. If you put a zero for the x, zero times anything is zero, right? So then that's just gone. You're left with y equals that number. That's the y-intercept. Because if x is zero, gone, y is, you see? Y is Y is whatever this is, whatever number that is, that's the y-intercept. In fact, you see this y-intercept right here? Yeah. 5? That's going to go right there. That 5 is going to go right there. In fact, Sam, do you see that to, <clears throat> if we have a graph like this, to write the equation, you have to find two things only. You have to find that. We already found that. And you got to find that. We know both. That is negative nine, no, negative five thirds. So y equals negative five over three times x plus five. Oh, there you go. That's it. That's the equation of that line. Everywhere on that line, that's an answer. That's everywhere on that line is an answer to that equation. <coughs> so Alex, on this one page which took about 20 minutes I showed you a ton of stuff without actually showing you how to do anything just a ton of facts but if you understand the facts and all the stuff you have to do like makes sense so let's try a couple things shall we and see if, see if we got this but you're gonna try them I'm not gonna show you yeah I know because as soon as I show you your IQ is gonna drop you have the idea right now. So you, don't, you don't. Yeah, I know, right? You don't need me to tell you. So let's try some. Ready? Let's try some. Use this notes right here. Use these notes to help you get unstuck when you get stuck. So, pregunta numero uno is. Question number one. <coughs> Mm 
Oh, it's blurry. Stop being blurry. Alex is awake now. I know, right? To make this easier, I'm going to put a couple points on here, okay? Okay, yeah, there's the first one. What's that? Well, yeah. But, I mean, it's true. <clears throat> there's the first one. Okay, that's what we're going to try right there. 